Welcome back, WNST, Tassel Baltimore and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively this much closer to going to Super Bowl 53, 4, 5, 8. I, I, I got to get my numbers together. It's LVI, LVI, I, I, I don't speak Roman numerals, but I tell you what I do speak. I speak billboards and big jackpots. I know we got one going on this week. We have a lot of fun with our friends at the Maryland Lottery. We let ourselves play. This is my summer cup. Uh, for my barbecues in the new home. I, I've, I can't find my razor. I can't find various soaps and uh, cleaning products and um, various TV cables. But I can find my man, John Mark, from the uh, Maryland Lottery. He is the uh, director of the Maryland Lottery Gaming. I got to tell you, John, I had a great week because, I, first off, we all watch a lot of great football. And I know Absolutely. you're Browns and I'm Ravens, yes. but well, you can't hey. hate on Joe Burrow and the Bengals right now, right? I no, mean, of course not. Of course not. It's, it's a lot of fun. Hey, and for, and for everyone everywhere, I want to say I've never been more um, pleased to be on a uh, remote broadcast. The minute you told me you're not, you can't find your soap and your personal hygiene products. I'm glad this is not an in-studio game. This is a mess. I mean, it really, you know, just give me 24 hours. I'll get it all together. I have these obligations to sponsors and commitments and guests and yeah. all the stuff we've been doing here, but I'm, I, I'm not hermiting out so much that I have not bathed because I have. Uh, and we went down to the casino. We went to live uh, the other day. My wife, my wife buys things on the internet, right? So, um, and she can't buy lottery tickets on the internet. But so, so we, we, she had bought something she had to return to Arundel Mills. So sure. we're, we're like, all right, if we're going to do that, why don't we wait for a football game? Why don't we go down and see the news, sport and social, the whole deal? Absolutely. And we went down and we had, we spent maybe about an hour and a half, but not, we didn't drink or gamble. Uh, we just literally toured. And Bobby's is still there in a cheesecake factory in a prime rib and like all that stuff. And, um, and, and, uh, you know, I, the whole Cordish group was great with us and saying hello sure. and whatnot. And we saw some, um, the place where I saw Michael Bolton, a place that Alice Cooper's going to be in a couple of weeks, but I wanted to get there and experience sports the way you and I've been talking about it. I wanted to go smell it, feel it, see the people, see who was gambling, see how it looked. Sure. Look like Vegas. <laughs> you know, it didn't look all that unfamiliar to me, you know, of what I see. But there was a line and there were kiosks and there were you could go to see a human if you wanted to bet that way. There were seats, there were reserved seats. There was energy. There were Steelers fans. I couldn't believe it. I saw more Steelers gear than I saw anything else. Um, yeah. I, all I could think about was you, the state, how many years I've been talking about this. I was my 31st year on radio, right, of talking about sports and gambling and points sure. and spreads and like all of that. To actually drive 20 minutes away, walk in, see it, feel it, it, it feels more real to me. Does that mean I don't even that that might not even make any oh, sense, but it feels absolutely. more real to me. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And and this is, you know, this is what what the 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 citizens of the state of Maryland had hoped for when when they voted back in November of 2020 to to go forward with sports wagering. And and you're seeing it live as well as the other four casinos are up and running now. So we have five casinos that are that are providing a sports wagering product on property. Uh, they're all experiencing what you saw uh, the, the other day. Um, lots of energy, lots of fans excited about. Uh, yeah, some people were the there to party. Some people were there sure. to gamble, hang, eat. Some people were there just to make a bet and get out of the mall or stop by and buy, you know, go over to Marshall's. Or whatever. My wife, you know, did a little shopping. We walked around a little bit and yep. it was uh, it was lovely. It was great. And And you know what? We made a mistake by not staying. Because we streamed the games over the weekend because our cable wasn't connected. It was a, it was better on set. Sunday. I missed the end of the Bills game and I missed the end of the Rams game because the stream stopped. Wow. Yeah. So like yeah. on the greatest, I mean, obviously I saw the ending and all that in the end, but I only knew the outcome by seeing the app and not believing it. Like I saw the app and I'm like, I just tweeted that Kansas City's going home. And I, that, that was after I had tweeted that the Rams. So it was a long day for me on on the sports side, but. I tell you what, the excitement that must have been in that place, the, the whole oh, weekend, absolutely. right? Absolutely. You know, it's funny because we're, we're I'm in the odds business. I, I deal with numbers all day long. If you had told me on Friday evening that on Saturday and Sunday, there would be four games and they would all come down to the last second of the clock with a field goal to either win or tie, I would have said you're nuts. There's there's no book anywhere in the world that would give you odds on that. And here it was, one after the other. I mean, you're exhausted. If you're a football fan without an allegiance to any of those teams that played, I, can you imagine if you were a diehard fan either way? I mean, that would have been 
devastating. Well, it was fun it, just the way it was. I mean, like it, exactly. it, it, it speaks to why we love football and it speaks to why we love sports and live theater. And, um, and I think it encompassed all of that. And I think as we get back to doing normal things again, hopefully soon I get back to the crab cake tour and finally get over to Nacho Mama's and uh, have another burrito quesadilla along with my crab cake. Um, I, <laughs> I, I think it's these things where we get trapped inside. We hope for good games again this weekend and heroes and villains and all that. And I'm going to the Super Bowl in two weeks and I'll have my Maryland lottery cup on the set at radio row and my lottery blue mask that everybody wants. Um, uh, John Martin is here. Of, he's the director of, uh, of the Maryland lottery and gaming. And I, you know, the, the lottery side of this is also fun right now because you got a jackpot again, right? Like, and here we you go. Got a jack- and- Absolutely. And before I get to the jackpot, let me just wrap up the football thing because oh, sure. as you're well aware, um, you know, our, the payoff for us with our Ravens scratch off tickets is the 20 years of Ravens tickets that will be won by some lucky fan. Uh, and we haven't set a date yet for that drawing, but I can, and I think it's fair here to enumerate the six finalists. One of these six people will win 20 years of Ravens tickets. And the most recent entrance into that, Thomas Hood of Baltimore, Maryland, Chantris Grant Hope of Brooklyn Park. Uh, those are two, Karen Roberts of Lithicum Heights. The third, Linda Walker Knight of Randallstown, the fourth person. William Perry, I love that. If, if the fridge walks out there, this will be hilarious. William Perry of Baltimore is the fifth and the sixth and final Diane Heil of Annapolis. One of these six people at a date very, very soon within the next uh, two or three weeks, we will get together probably virtually still, but one of those six will win Ravens tickets for the next 20 years. Can you imagine that, Nestor? Well, I hope we beat Joe Burrow a few times between now and then. You know, I have no, no, no doubt about beating Baker Mayfield. I am a little worried about the Jimmys and the Joes this week uh, as we get on to the, uh, to the Super Bowl in two weeks. I, you know, I, for me, I, I guess with the lottery, I, I, the, the beginning of all this are jackpots. My wife sees yep. all this. I sure. brought it up. I, it was a couple of weeks ago. She was out. I told you we stopped. We had to buy tickets. I finally checked them. I mean, it's fun checking them when you win. It's no fun checking them when you lose. I'll be honest with you. But don't get rid of them. Again, every ticket gives you a chance to be an entrant into our My Lottery Rewards program for fabulous prizes. So don't don't throw those My away. My wife worked, is working the app. She's doing it. I mean, good. she's in charge Very of all good. apps in the family, like in that way. Um, although I do have the Wise app on my thing, but, but I had to learn it on the air and embarrass myself when my password didn't reset. I'm so terrible yeah. with the passwords. But for, yeah. for, for you with, with jackpots and where this thing gets to explain to people just the genesis of this of how the money because you said you you count odds and numbers and how do these things get the three four five they, they literally i would say it's like going to the the old bingo hall in the 50 50 that the more you put in the more that comes out of it but sure. it's the longer and the odds of how weird these numbers are and the balls that come up and the special number that the power ball or whatever it is that's the delineator and the odds are in the hundreds and hundreds of millions of winning it. Let's start exactly. with that, right? Exactly right. I mean, to, to win that jackpot in, in, in either Mega Millions or Powerball, and we'll just round it up for this conversation. Yeah, you're talking roughly 300 million to one uh, to win that. So, uh, but, but, but the, the, the true fun and enjoyment is there are a number of cascading prizes. We have nine different tiers of prizes. So and they started at a, at a break-even price. Hopefully you get your, your money back on that. But then there are various steps based on how many of the matching numbers you have relative to the balls that, that are picked on a given draw night. And then each week I'm part of the group that sits here and we kind of convene um, and, and set the jackpot for the next run and the next run. And it's, it's, you're right. It's kind of like a, a 50, 50 raffle. If you think about that from a, from a church or a, or, or a kids youth league uh, type of an event, you know, depending on how much we anticipate sales coming in, that's how the jackpot can grow. And, you know, it's great when you have a national coast to coast game, because those numbers get multiplied very, very quickly, which is why. My after- wife knows first thing in the morning, nobody hit it. Nobody, you know, nobody hit it. I mean, it's almost oh, like sure. she's from East Baltimore. It's beautiful. It's like my neighborhood. You know, by the way, I always tell you my Springsteen story. I cashed another lottery ticket one time, and you can tell by my smile. I just recollected this when you were talking about it. <laughs> you said there were nine tiers, right? Right. And this is a long time ago. This is at the dawn. This is back in when I lived. Uh, when I lived in, in Colgate. So I mean, I, it must have been in the '80s, right? Um, I hit three or four out of the six. This is before they had the other number and all that. And I hit enough to win 
10 bucks or 20, you know, it was like, I won a few bucks. It was right. more than getting your money back. It was, it was more than like getting a buck or five bucks, but it was like something like that. So I did cash a ticket one time because that was the only way you could play back in the day. There was either you hit three or if you hit three, you get a dollar. If you hit four, you get, you know, 20 or whatever. And then it was like, if you hit five, you get a hundred thousand. And then after that was a jackpot, but that was, yeah, I mean, that that makes me an old guy to explain the lottery that way when the old wishbone was around the whole deal, right? Right, right, right. And and hang on to that old wishbone stuff. I mean, we're getting ready for our 50th anniversary year in 2023. So uh, we'll be doing a lots lots of fun things with with player promotions, with excitement, with resurrection. Maybe sing things. the old jingles because I, I can remember some of them. Well, you know what? We we may have a talent competition. We may, maybe we'll do a a, a lottery got talent. Um, competition. Thanks you for know, the I, idea. I was such a kid that like consume media and I was a newspaper. That's what I wanted to do with my life. And, but I listened to the radio and television. I was, a, you know, so every jingle, you know, that came along and, and I know you're not marketing 12 year old kids because we went through that, but you heard the jingles, you heard the songs, you remember them all your whole life. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'll sing some, I will sing jingles for you next year. I, I'll you start go. to, I'll start to rehearse. How about that? Please do that. Please do that. Uh, but yeah, we're looking for lots of things. And certainly over the next several months as, as, uh, 2023 gets closer, um, we'll begin to tease and announce, uh, new games, new promotions, new activities to celebrate our 50th anniversary year. That's a, uh, it's a lot of ground to cover and we're, we're very, very excited about it. You know, I used to go to your events or annual events and always play games with Carol and Roz and all that and trivia games and all that to win prizes. Uh, I won a really nice prize one year as well. Um, but I didn't know when we were doing this thing that I was going to be dealing with this with you with the Monopoly trivia and get out of jail free. And now we have the Monopoly game. So apparently, you know, I should make some music for this or something. We should have some Wink Martindale or some. There you uh, go. Jack well, come on Barry. down. Come on down, Nestor. You're the next contestant on Monopoly Trivia. Are you ready? I have not. I've done no homework on the. You know right. this. I told you hey. I saw the Dundalkopoly over at Wise and thought I might get that, but I haven't played. Go with your gut. Go with your gut. You okay, embarrassed me last one. week with the wheelbarrow question. No, no, I didn't no, no, no. know about it. I had the dog and the cat and, you know. All so right, go ahead. Go. What do we got? All right. Which of the four railroads was not real? And I will remind you of what those four railroads are. No, no, hold on. Reading, Reading, Reading Railroad. B&O, B &O, hold on. Um, Reading, B&O. You know. Go ahead, give me the other two. Pennsylvania Railroad and the Short Line. Which of those the four? The Short Line, the Short Line, the Short Line. And that was the one over by Boardwalk. It was like, you got over near Short Line, you get out of that neighborhood if you had, you had, Boardwalk had hotels on it, houses on Park Place. Get out of that neighborhood. Nestor, you have redeemed yourself because the answer is the short line. Yes. Was, while it was real, it wasn't a bona fide railroad. It was actually a city tram line, originally called the Shore Fast Line, and later changed to the short line for the game. What itself. you're really doing is Atlantic City history, because right, because yeah. it, it was it, all the road, Ventnor and Atlantic and all. All right. So, um, all right, right here's the one. Let's go. Here's Let's the go. second one. All right. I'm letting myself play. All right. Very nice. Very nice. Now, this is going to need a little math. You have to take your, your shoes and socks off, maybe. How much Monopoly money comes in the box? Mm. Mm. A, $14,620. B, $18,440. C, $20,580. D twenty four thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. Ooh, so I'm trying to think about singles and fives and tens and I remember the colors, right? The, the ones were white, the fives were pink, the tens were yellow, the hundreds were also, I think, yellow, and the fifties were blue, maybe. Anyway, yeah, right um, yeah, I think right the twenties were green. I mean, I, you know, I. I rolled some dice. Dundalk, Dun Dun we did things. We played Canasta. We played Risk. We, you know, we played Stratego. You know, we, we played board games. Trouble. Pop the little ball. All um, right. Get focus here, Nestor. 14,000 plus. John Martin 18, is here. Let me reset. We talk about Monopoly and your, while we're playing Monopoly games and doing stuff here. They have scratch offs. You can win a lot of money and you don't need to know anything about monopoly no uh, these, these are not though, requirements these are not this is the fun part this is not the requirement well, you know the cool part for for you doing monopoly is 
and honestly, is that I know enough about it to be dangerous that it, it isn't a game I didn't play. You know, isn't backgammon or, you know, some like chess good, checkers good. Um, yeah. So what's Battleship, your love Battleship, Operation. I wasn't so good at that. Um, but okay. Um, go ahead. There are 30 bills of each denomination. So you were on the right track there trying to think of ones and fives. Okay, so 30, 30 times five, 15, and 253. Too late, you're out of time. 20, $20,580 20, is the correct answer. Was it C? 30 of each denomination. I was going to say C. Oh, there you go. If so it's like last... Jeopardy and I push the button, I get penalized for getting it wrong. I don't want to get it wrong. So here's the last question. Okay. And maybe you, you, you know this one as well. What is the longest game of Monopoly on record? A, 70 hours. B, seven weeks. C, 70 days. Or D, seven years. Now, we'll tell you more. This is according to the National Museum of Play. There is a National Museum of Play that authenticates this. 70 days. Nestor, you're very proud of yourself. You should be. 70 days is, in fact, the correct answer. We had Monopoly games that lasted long weekends at our – I mean, and if you hit the board and knock the house oh, off the board – Oh, man. Oh, my God. The dog or the cat or yeah, somebody yeah. dumps – my drink, you know, like John yeah. Harbaugh did all over my desk at the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. John Martin is here. He's the director of uh, all things lottery and gaming with uh, our great state and uh, getting out this weekend. If you're going out gambling, uh, betting the games, do it responsibly, everybody. I mean, I, I was hoping that people were, you know, people were having fun at the casino the other day. Just want people to be, uh, listen to Mooch when he tells you to, you know, know your limits and do all those good things. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, same thing. I tell my wife that whenever it's, uh, it's mega millions and Powerball, I'm just, you know, come on, man. We you know it's a one in 300 million odds. And she's like, why not me? Why not me? I want a boat. I want blue water. I want, you know, and I'm like, all right, let's play. Yeah, Put no, it's, it's okay to have those dreams, but you're right. And, and, and I love those, those commercials. And, and a lot of that is really the, the emphasis behind the uh, American Gaming Association, the AGA, and, and we're proud to, to support their, their efforts on, on keeping the responsible gaming mis message in the forefront in all that you do, whether it's uh, scratch offs, uh, Powerball Mega Millions, sports wagering, you know, have a plan, stick to it and have some fun, but uh, know when it's time to uh, come back another day. Swear to God in moving stuff. I can't find my razor. I can't find my coal roofing mug. I did find my, my Maryland lottery. So I, you know, this stuff was in my car. Um, I didn't lose that, but I, I was uh, moving some stuff. I have one board game left that, you know, I, I think my wife might have a connect four or five, whatever little, little travel yeah. version. I was a big Scrabble guy. I know you find that hard to believe given my literacy, um, but I was a big <laughs> Scrabble. I love Scrabble. So if there was something that, would occupy my mind in that way, playing Scrabble. And you can't lose tiles, you know, but I like tiles and boards. I always had the Gucci version, the the classic where, you know, the board wouldn't get messed up and it would spin and, and have, wow. because of, no, I love Scrabble. So wow. that's the game I have, but I would say this in, in all honesty, I'm having fun playing Monopoly game with you. So you can tell Carol, I'll play with her, Roz, anybody wants to play and I'm not going to cheat. Like what I'm saying is I don't own Monopoly back there. I'm not going to Google but I know the yellow was Ventnor. I knew a little bit about the railroads, um, the funny guy with community chest and like all that. But I haven't looked any of the utilities up. I haven't done any of that. So I'm letting myself play along. I got two out of three today, which, you know, like that's a song. Meatloaf. I told the greatest meatloaf wow. story ever. And I don't mean you to have one. Oh, I told it with Bill Cole earlier. Uh, I knew meat. Um, not through my rock and roll uh, era, it, although a little bit was, but I really knew him through baseball because he loved the Yankees. He loved baseball and he loved my cousin. And I did a rock and jock show back in 1992, three, four, five, before wow. the Ravens existed. Every year in April, Getty Lee would call in, Rick Nielsen, Mike Mazaris from the Smithereens. Um, just a lot of rock stars would call in. Some of them I knew a little. Some of them were friends of friends of friends who knew baseball. Sure, I wish sure. I would have had Eddie Vedder and Jeff Amen. I never had those guys, and they were they were baseball guys. Um, yeah. But I had you know rock stars on. And Meat was at at the going back up with I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. And I had the opportunity 
I could make the story shorter long. I told the long version to Bill Cole. So go listen to it, Cole Roofing. He's, it's at at Baltimore Positive. It's a long story. I didn't tell my Louie Anderson story, but I'm going to tell that next week. And that involves Good. Vegas. But Meatloaf and I befriended each other at the All-Star Game in 94. And then in 95, he performed at the Super Bowl. Before we had a football team here, when the wow. Steelers played the Cowboys in Arizona, I was on Radio Row even then. Before we had a team, I was out there with Dick Schaap doing radio. Sure. And... um. He performed and there was a DJ there in Phoenix who did the Phil Rizzuto part, in Paradise <laughs> by the Dashboard, <laughs> which is how we got to this. Cause I had two out of three. Ain't yeah. bad. I want yeah. you. I need you. There ain't no yeah. way I'm ever going to love you. So Paradise by the Dashboard light, a, a radio jock and me had done my show at this point, knew me, you know, enough to come on and, um, Mark Messina was with me. Mike Messina was pitching the all-star game. So it, 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 we knew each sure. other. Mark worked nice. for me. So in Phoenix, me has a Phoenix disc jockey do the Rizzuto part and nailed it. Well, the batter's coming up around first. Oh, second, save, yeah. second. Oh, oh, my God, I think he's going to make it. So stop right there. So the Phoenix guy did it. I saw meet afterward. And, and I said, that guy was great. He's like, well, if you want to do it and when I come to Merriweather this summer, you can do it. And I'm like, I, I'll try. He's like, you can't do it. And I'm like, I'll try. He's like, you won't be able to do it, but I'm going to give you a chance to do it. And he's like, it'll be shtick. And he's like, there's no way you're going to do it. He said, you saw that guy do it. Nobody can do it. I couldn't believe that guy could do it. That guy came and rehearsed it and killed it in rehearsal and then went up on stage and killed it. And yeah. he's like, you're not going to do that. And I'm like, you're probably right. Short story long, I went to the audition Go listen to Bill Cole, and you can hear the uh, remnants of nice. my, uh, my friend Jimmy Meatloaf. So there. A there tease. Well played Two there. out of three ain't bad. I did okay on the monopolizing. Talk to me about, uh, about the Monopoly game and why we're having some fun at the expense of Boardwalk and Park. Yeah, no, this is this is a, a, a new effort for us. We've combined our, our traditional uh, Monopoly licensed property with the uh, scratch-off tickets, but we also now combine it with two fast play, which is the instant win terminal game. So we have Monopoly tickets at the $1, $2, 5 and $10 scratch off price points. And we've added a $3 and a $20 denomination on the fast play tickets. All six of those contribute to our second chance pricing, which is very unique. Each month, starting in January, I'm sorry, starting in February through July, we will draw once a month. 10 $2,500 winners of second chance prizes, but a jackpot, a progressive style jackpot will roll right now. This morning, it was nearly $16,000. And by the so time progressive we have throwing, in the way that, that the big jackpots are progressive. Yep. Okay. yep. So, you know, go to mdlottery.com, get a status on where it is, um, get your non-winning tickets in before the, the drop dead date. We'll, we'll, which is going to be on the 20th of February. We'll draw on the 21st of February. And whatever that jackpot is, one lucky winner will take that prize. And that will then reset. And for the next month, it'll roll up again and again and again, month after month from now through uh, the last drawing is July 11th. Anybody so, coming in uh, this week uh, winning millions of dollars and putting a smile on Roz's face over there? We did. We had, we had I think, our lucky Monopoly or our uh, Mega Millions winner from Severn, I think, came in uh, this week. Uh, we have winners coming in daily. Uh, people like to win money. They like to come in here, uh, whether it's uh, you know relatively smaller jackpots. They all count. And uh, all the way up to the million dollar winner. So we, I love that there's a hundred thousand dollar winner in Dundalk this week at the Wise Carroll Mall. I like saying Wise on Wise Avenue, just where Wise markets are. Um, but it's in Dundalk. It, it was a different Wise, W I S E, Wise, like Wise Avenue. Yeah. Uh, mind, you know what, John? That's Patapsco side of Dundalk. We, you know, I, I, I kid my guys because Costas is on the Patapsco side, but they claim Sparrows Point. Because they're on yes. the other side of North Point Boulevard. So, yes. you know, the Dundalk Patapsco thing, it's a little bit like the Cleveland, Baltimore, Pittsburgh thing when we have to watch Cincinnati play yeah. in the championship. I don't listen, let them win. Like, seriously, let them win. I'm happy if Joe Burrow wins better this year and a year we can't win because we're both going to be, everybody's going to be, Mike Tomlin, everybody's going to be dealing with that cap, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be an, it's going to be very interesting next year. Whoever is, is fit and able 
on any side of the ball. Next year should be very, very interesting. By the way, I don't hate on the 49ers, just, but I kind of want the Rams to win because I'm going to the Super Bowl and I'm being selfish about it. Because like, it'll just be more fun if the Rams are in it for me in the same way that a couple of years ago, like Minnesota came this close and didn't. And then all the Eagles fans came in. Not to say that wasn't fun. Thank you, Jim Schwartz, Joe Douglas. But, but it's, you know, the hometown thing, and sure. the Hollywood thing and me doing radio with a mask and like all week long, I think the stars will come out. If, uh, it, if it, will, it will be there. interesting. I mean, you know, clearly they, they, they put the team together for this run. If it doesn't work this year for them, I don't know what they do next year. Well, Hey, have a great week. Enjoy it. I don't want a well, good, great couple of weeks. I won't see you for a few weeks. I'm going to be at the Super Bowl next week. We're going to have, um, can we say pinch hitter, even though baseball's not playing right now? Are we allowed to say a pinch sure hitter? Sure we can. Sure we all can. Right. Backup quarterback. Uh, well, I want to say that, right? No. Because it might be Tyler Huntley. It might be really good. It might be, I don't know. I mean, well, you know Could what be. I mean? Could, Could win be. some games, you know? Could be. But, yes, right. we'll, see, we'll get together at some point down the road. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Always good to see you. Thank you, Nestor. Appreciate it. John Martin joining us here, director of the Maryland Lottery and Gaming, monopolizing things around here and having some fun. We're letting ourselves play. The Maryland Lottery will uh, be getting the Crab Cake Tour back out on the road. I'm going to be having some remnants of the Crab Cake Tour out in L.A., but I'm not having any crab cakes in California. I promise you that. Uh, but uh, we're going to be out on the road doing Super Bowl coverage uh, presented by the Maryland Lottery, as well as our friends at Costas. I'm wearing my Costas shirt right now. I'm looking forward to getting back there, doing a Crab Cake Tour over there. Our first stop will be at Nacho Mama's, as promised. And I think we're going to probably get that going right after Valentine's Day. I am Nestor. We are WNST AM 1570 Towson, Baltimore, and we never stop talking. Baltimore, positive.